I am Zelda Cheetle and I'm here to talk to you about curating this exhibition that has got a short title, Square in the Circle, but it's also got a long title that, for which there are many reasons. It's called Square in the Circles of Confusion, Neo-Pictorialism in the 21st Century. Now, the circles of confusion are when you use an analogue enlarger and when you are getting the focus together, that is the circles of confusion. But squaring the circle is also to do with the pixel between an analogue and a digital because one is rectangular, almost square, and one is ovoid, almost circular. So that we're talking about from the very beginning of photography, analogue to the most digital and contemporary. Because what we're dealing with in the exhibition is all very 21st century, I mean, I think as you walk around the room, I mean, there's some going to be examples of 19th century, beautiful, beautiful pictures, but then Spencer Roll, he's made stereographs, they're completely contemporary pictures, but he's dealing really with depression, and it's like a whole long lineage that has been in his family, and he works as a psychoanalyst, and it's very interesting, so that as you look at the stereographs, there's the black dog of depression, but I mean, it's there and it's not there, so that as you look, and you are looking at three dimensions, it's whether is the landscape, has it got the dog or has it not? It's so, that is, we're dealing with that. We, we move on to Joy Gregory. She's um, got some pictures that are called Lost Histories. She comes from a um, Caribbean background. She's, I mean, she's British, but her family are Jamaican. There's a whole sort of missing part of all of our knowledge of black history. And so that these lost histories, she's actually now made as these very beautiful, beautiful pictures. But then David George is following on from Tom Hunter. He's made a series of what looked like the most bucolic kind of traditional English romantic scene. There's the end, there's an oil rig that is being dismantled. There is um, pylons that are making their way towards a nuclear power station. And then in the foreground, there is the, the original salt marsh. But I mean, all of his work, he photographs, there'll be some in colour that he does at night time, and then there'll be these very lovely little photo reviewers. They're all about how um, how you perceive something. So that I think, again, you asked if this is for young people or for older people. You would look at these and then you have to look again because you might be lulled into this false sense of how beautiful they are. But in fact, they're dealing with the whole issue of how we're using the earth and what, what man has done to the earth that is important. Then we move on to Susan Dirges. We're going to be showing her series of tide pools. What Susan is actually addressing here is that, I mean, they're very beautiful. They're made cameraless images so that they are direct onto the paper. But there is practically no sea life left. And so that what you're looking at are tide pools that, that began with the Victorians. They plundered the colonial um, countries, but they also plundered their own ocean so that there's no fish left and so that the tide pools are practically bereft of any life. And then again, you move from Susan Dirges into Takashi Arai's work. So this, I think, will be fascinating for everybody. Will be exhibited, he's photographed, I think, 57 teenagers so far, but we have the space to show 17. So it's 17 17 year olds. He's interviewed them all about how does it feel to live on a nuclear site. And so as their voice will appear on the audio, the light will come on above their daguerreotype so that you will see the picture of each person that's talking as they speak in this dark room. And then we have in the center on a, a wall that goes, runs down the center of the gallery, there will be Celine Baudin. All of them are digital photographs and yet you believe that you're looking at painting and so it's another one of those catch-22 what what exactly am i looking at so by the time you actually leave um, and you will be walking past gwen which is by ian mclaren which is a really beautiful big multiple piece 16 pictures in a grid that make up one portrait of his mother-in-law she's now got alzheimer's and so um, Ian has made a very moving uh, series of gum bichromates that are built up in layer upon layer so that the actual prints are sometimes 11 layers of gum bichromate, like the layers of the brain. As you suffer with dementia and Alzheimer's, the layers of the brain are affected. So that's going to be a great big piece and then it's time to leave the exhibition.
Well, it's been a sort of slow realisation that people are making work like this. I mean, and I see a lot of work a lot of the time. Um, I mean, I think I exhibited Takashi probably about three or four years ago, and I've known Joy Gregory for, I mean, nearly all of the people in the show, I've sort of, and it just seemed it was the, to seize the moment. And here we are, it's 2020. It sort of seemed everything all began to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. It's right, it's absolutely right. And I think it means that this is the beginning. And I think neo-pictorialism will go forward from this moment on. People will not be frightened or not feel like they're um, in any way inferior if they make very beautiful, handmade, sensitive imagery. I don't think you need to have any prior knowledge of any of these types, but I think that it would be very difficult to walk out of the exhibition not having realised that there's a lot of different things going on. And we hope to have a glossary so that people will see that, oh, well, there's a cyanotype is different to a salt print, which is different to a gum bichromate. Yeah. And there's some straight, I mean, like Celine Baudin's, those are digital prints, those are contemporary prints, but they look like Victorian painting. So that all of the time, hopefully, you will be, without any prior knowledge of anything to do with photography at all, you'll come out thinking, oh, I've actually discovered something. I've actually, I've realised that there can be real beauty in things and it's also that sort of tactile nature of making a print can have a real effect on how it makes you feel, which is what the original pictorialists really wanted people to do. They wanted people to feel things when they looked at a picture. The interesting thing about curating that is different to other parts of photography is that you have to have a kind of um, spatial awareness of how something is going to work together. And so that whenever I saw the space here, and I already had some of these photographers in my mind, I knew exactly, and I always am able to get that picture in my mind before, and it's usually exactly what comes out at the other end. And it's interesting. The craftsmanship involved in actually making a lot of the prints that are in this exhibition is a major part of it, and you, you feel that whenever you look at them.